ओके लेट्स कंटिन्यू सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी एसेंशियली सॉ हाउ टू रिकग्नाइज इफ अ क्लोज लूप सिस्टम इज स्टेबल और नॉट ओनली बाई लुकिंग एट द लूप गेन प्लॉट एंड इन द लूप गेन्स बोर्ड ए प्लॉट वॉट डू यू लुक एट टू फाइंड इफ द सिस्टम इज स्टेबल और नॉट या फेस मार्जिन सो विच मीन्स वॉट एक्जैक्टली डू यू लुक एट या यू ट्राई टू फाइंड द फेस एट द यूनिटी गेन फ्रीक्वेंसी और यूनिटी लुक गेन फ्रीक्वेंसी and if the absolute value of the phase is uh, greater than 180 it means it is unstable and to quantify the stability we defined phase margin as 180 minus this angle right and although remember we uh, have to get full understanding of the stability through uh, closed loop poles we got some understanding through ro root locus and translated that understanding as phase margin right and uh, through the root locus discussion there were couple of takeaways let me just highlight that first is something we knew already a first order system if i put it in negative feedback is it stable or unstable stable so that is guaranteed to be stable so that is one thing that we saw so what about a second order system is it strictly unstable or is it stable huh sorry i mean okay if you remember for a second order system if i uh, sketch the root locus plots let's say i had two open loop poles here the closed loop poles essentially did this right so it is stable or unstable stable but the issue was yeah the poles were lying on the complex space right so uh, what is the minimum so which means if i have a third order system we saw it's unstable so i'll just loosely translate that statement as if i have more and more poles in my system i'll say more poles means more closer to instability right and in particular uh, we notice that if i do not want to have any kind of ringing in my closed loop response where do i want my closed loop poles to lie on we want it to lie on the real axis so that is another observation we made i'll say closed loop poles on real axis and if i have an lhp 0 in the loop gain plot if i have an lhp 0 was it improving with the stability or it was not improving the stability it was improving the stability and again if we look, look at the root locus plot i'll just show it so that it's okay so the same second order example if we take let us say now i have a uh, left half plane 0 here we essentially saw the root locus did this instead of getting branched out to the complex s plane it kind of falls back on the real axis right so i'll say lhp 0 makes it it's good for stability right? now we looked at only lhp 0 let's also look at rhp 0 and see what's what's up with that so again I, let me draw the root locus again so sigma j omega let's assume that i have the poles here and now i have an rhp 0 which means here so again uh, the root locus that is a closed loop poles will start at these two points one of them will terminate in the zero other will terminate at infinity and if you sketch the uh, portion on the real axis you will have something here and something here so which means one pole moves to infinity like this other pole reaches the zero like this so uh, is this fine or do you foresee a problem here if i have closed loop poles behaving like this is it okay or is it not okay so is it fine or not fine no this is actually a huge disaster right i mean at least earlier do, when you didn't have anything you were actually okay right when i just had the two poles although they were not lying on the real axis the system was definitely stable but in the act of doing something you did some monkey business and if you introduce an rhp 0 it is a disaster right so i'll just mark it here rhp 0 i'll say uh, i'll just say it's unstable i mean it means it is not good for stability okay so again rhp 0 is like that you know one friend that you have who in the name of helping you will do something and make the situation very bad right so i mean you can think of lhp 0 as the you know the uh, angel inside you that is trying to make you do good and make it more and more stable 
R S P three is like the devil in you, trying to you know uh, attract you to all bad things and make you become more unstable. And the best illustration I have for that is this thing. No? L S P zero is like the angel in you, trying to push the close loop holes to the S plane, make it stable. R S P zero is like the devil in you, trying to attract you with all you know nice bad things, trying to keep you to the R S P. Anyways, so at least now we have an understanding of uh, these points. and we have gotten this understanding in the frequency domain now if we have understanding in the frequency domain what do we try to do in which domain we try to understand next time domain because i mean the usual thing i say is i mean uh, let's say you don't have i mean sometimes right if you have a problem it is uh, good to look at in the time domain sometimes you might not get any intuition in time domain so you go to frequency domain so the example i give is it's like asking pocket money from your parents you ask pocket money pocket money to your uh, from your mom she doesn't give you would you ask next So, so make sure you are on good terms with both of them. So that's why we'll also be uh, comfortable with both. So in particular, we'll try to uh, get answers for two broad statements: why, if we have more and more poles, system is unstable, and why we have an LHP zero, it is stable, and RSP zero is not. Those are the broad questions we try to get answers for in time domain. So let me start with pole. for that let me consider a simple first order system like this say it's a not by 1 plus s by p1 let us say i feed in a input signal which is a sinusoidal signal say sin omega not t times u of t so this is an lti system having one pole i feed in a sinusoid can you comment anything about the steady state output how will the steady state output look like here huh yeah okay can you give more information about the sinusoid correct yeah correct remember that i mean if i this i when i say this is a transfer function the free, so sinusoidal frequency response that is h of j omega is this fellow Correct. You substitute S as J omega, and by frequency response, it is the sinusoidal frequency response. It is the response of your system when the input is a complex exponential or a sinusoid at a frequency omega. That's it. So sinusoid gets scaled by this, so which means the magnitude is scaled by the magnitude of this fellow, and you have an additional phase which corresponds to the phase of this transfer function at the sinusoidal frequency. So tell me the steady state output. I have sine. What is the amplitude? A not by square root of 1 plus omega not square by p1 square fine i have the sign frequency is same what will be the phase plus or minus minus tan inverse of omega not by p1 okay fine this is a steady state response so let's say i consider a case where omega not is much much smaller than p1 so how can i approximate the amplitude as omega not is very small so how can i approximate this as a not so that is the amplitude now omega not e so again omega not by p1 is really small for small values of x what is tan inverse of x same as x so this is minus omega not by is it okay so this i can rewrite it this way a not times sin omega not times t minus 1 by p1 is okay so what is this now yeah it seems like we have a time shift it is delayed or advanced delay right so this is a time delay so which means in steady state it will appear as though the sinusoid is delayed by the system right again just to make it clear the input we are applying is uh, sin omega t times u of t so it is zero and from t greater than 0 you have the sinusoid running like this now when you feed in this input you will have some transient in the beginning okay that i have not sketched what i have written is only the steady state portion in steady state the uh, waveform will look like as though it is kind of delayed 
it's not i have not drawn it clean but i hope you get the idea okay so qualitatively you can say that if you have a pole in your network that kind of introduces a time delay in your system fine so now let us say let's see what will happen if i use this fellow in uh, negative feedback so i'll take this So I'll take the same first order system and put it in negative feedback, and I'll consider a unity feedback for simplicity. Let's assume the input I apply is a unit step, right? So this is the input. This is. Fine. is equal to 0 so uh, before t equal to 0 this was 0 outputs were all 0 everything was 0 nicely at t equal to 0 plus what happens to the unit step it jumps up to 1 right but because of the delay the out system will not respond instantly so this will still be at 0 at t equal to 0 plus so which means this is also starting from 0 so what can you say about the error signal here now that will essentially jump up to 1 so this will see the unit step now is this fine so if i were to sketch the scenario at t equal to 0 plus alone it is as though i have the system here a naught by 1 plus s by p1 right? and the entire step is kind of fed to the system directly at t equal to 0 plus alone is this okay so I am feeding a step like this. So at t equal to 0 plus, how do you think the output uh, will look like here? I mean, like not at t equal to 0 plus, just after t equal to 0 plus, how will how will the output look like here? I feed in a step input to the system. So how will the response here look like? No, no, I mean, I am just looking at very small values of time. At the initial portion, how the waveform will look like? Yeah, why? Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, let's, one way to think is like this, if I'm saying t equal to 0 plus, that is very small portion of time, I'm looking at very small frequencies are really large frequencies, very large frequencies. So, which means my S is going to be really large compared to P1. So, how can I approximate the transfer function as A0 by S by P1. So, this is A0 p1 by s so what kind of block is this integrator so now we have applied a step so which means the output will integration of a step is ramp so initially uh, if this is the input the output will ramp like this so that's what will happen the output will initially ramp like this so i'll say this increases so if the output increases the uh, oops, sorry if the output here increases the error signal will start to drop right and if the error signal starts to drop the signal that is going and exciting your system also reduces so the rate at which the output increases also reduces and that's what gives you the nice exponential signal and the error kind of decays to zero Cool. I mean, this is something we knew. Uh, first order system is stable, so nothing fancy here. What is the minimum order I need to have in my system so that it is unstable? Huh? Two was okay. What? I mean, for second order system, the closed loop holes were still in the LHP. So, what is the minimum order I need to have instability? Three. So, let's take that case. I'll just repeat the same thing. So, I'll erase all this. So I will just take a third order system like this. So again at t equal to still t equal to 0 plus there is no change right. So at t equal to 0 plus we have the step applied to the system. So now this is 1 plus s by p1 whole cube. I can approximate like this. 
fine s became s cube that's it okay so now tell me when i had 1 by s that is single integration i integrate a step i get a ramp t if i have s square what will this be i mean s square is integration of this ramp integration of t will give you what t square i mean let's ignore the scaling factors of the order of t square i have s cube which means this will be integrated further what will that be let's forget about the scaling factors So now uh, I know that at t equal to zero plus, it's going to go as t cube. Now tell me for around t equal to zero plus, that is for small values of time, will t cube be rising slower than t or faster than t? Slower. For small values of t, t cube is smaller than t. So if this is t, your t cube will initially rise slowly, but later on it will pick up, right? It will explode. But we are interested only in this portion. because our entire calculation is assuming this to be s by p1 which means we are looking at very small portions of time so which means the waveform here will now rise very slowly with a lot of delay and that should make sense because earlier when i had a first order system i had one pole we saw having one pole is like having a delay i have three poles so the delay is higher or more i mean higher or lower so it makes sense that it also responds with a longer delay so which means i'll say this uh, increase the output increases slowly and it will increase like this and ideally when it reaches the final value here the error signal that excites the system will become zero and the output should stop but unfortunately the system is very slow which means at this time it will it will be responding to an input that is supplied say sometime before so which means the system will be oblivious to the fact that the output has actually reached the desired value it will still think that it is living in the past it will think that the output is still not reached the desired value so it will try to push up the output so it will overshoot after overshooting it will recognize oh my god i have gotten uh, you know beyond the range so what it will do it will try to drop but it will be too late so again it will kind of do this and now depending on the dynamics of the system that is the location of this pole value of dc can a not you can have multiple cases you can have something that is rising like this or this can die down or this can sustain you can have anything based on the system dynamics <coughs> again again simplest example for this is let us say in the winter you want to take hot water bath you have two taps one hot water tap one cold water tap you have a bucket so you open both of them you sense the temperature by dipping the hand in the bucket and see you know how uh, the temperature is now if your action is very slow let's say you do this slowly take it out by the time you recognize that water temperature has reached the correct value it might happen that the hot water temperature has increased i mean hot water inflow has increased temperature will increase so now you'll try to reduce the temperature by pushing cold water now which means it will become more colder and that kind of you know that is the oscillation wave so that's the bottom line if you have more and more poles in your system you have more and more delay introduced and having a lot of delay in any kind of negative feedback system is not a good thing for stability right and that basically explains uh, the answer to our first question or we have some understanding for why having lot of poles makes a system unstable in closed loop 